Welcome to Facts Intrigue in our video, Ghosts of Tombstone, The Enigmatic Tale of Johnny Ringo. In the heart of the American Old West, under the relentless sun and amid the untamed wilderness, a legend was born. This is the tale of Johnny Ringo, the enigmatic outlaw whose name became synonymous with the turmoil and tempest of an era long past. Our story begins in the rolling hills of Indiana, where John Peters Ringo came into this world on a spring day in May 1850. Young Johnny's life in the Midwest was short-lived, for destiny called his family westward to the burgeoning frontiers of Missouri. In the bygone days of the western frontier, life was a tapestry of relentless hardship and raw courage. This epoch, steeped in legend, bore witness to a cavalcade of both lawmen and outlaws whose deeds are etched in the annals of history. Amongst these storied figures was Johnny Ringo, an enigmatic outlaw whose name resonates through time. To share more background about where Johnny Ringo came from, Johnny Ringo was born John Peters Ringo on the 3rd of May 1850, in Wayne County, Indiana, and emerged from very humble beginnings. His parents, Martin and Mary, Dutch immigrants, harbored dreams of a better future in the new world. Ringo, sharing distant blood with the notorious younger brothers, allies of the infamous Jesse James, grew up in a family of seven, including three sisters and a younger brother. The Ringos, in pursuit of prosperity and health, journeyed through the heartlands of America. They settled briefly in Liberty, Missouri, in 1856, before venturing to Gallatin, Missouri, two years later. By the summer of 1864, the winds of fate carried them to San Jose, California. Martin Ringo, Johnny's father, was battling the ravages of tuberculosis, and hoped the salubrious air of the West would offer respite. Tuberculosis, was often referred to in the past as, consumption, due to the way it seemed to consume the body of the infected person and was a major health threat during the 19th century, including the era of Johnny Ringo. Tuberculosis was one of the most common causes of death in the 19th century. It was a highly infectious disease affecting primarily the lungs but was also capable of damaging other parts of the body. Tuberculosis took the lives of many people during this period of time, including the infamous Doc Holliday who would become intertwined with Johnny Ringo later in Ringo's life. Before we delve further into the riveting saga of Johnny Ringo, we'd like to share an exciting announcement with our viewers. This video marks the inaugural episode of our captivating Ghosts of Tombstone series. In this series, we'll be bringing to life the tales of legends like Doc Holliday and many other renowned figures of the Wild West. To ensure you don't miss these enthralling stories, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for notifications. Your journey through the annals of Tombstone's history awaits. Now, let's continue unraveling the enigmatic tale of Johnny Ringo. Tuberculosis, a merciless affliction of the era, wrought havoc on his father's health, its cruel grasp tightening with each passing day. As mentioned earlier, it was known in those times as consumption, it was a disease as insidious as it was relentless. Characterized by a harrowing cough that often culminated in the chilling sight of blood, the illness also brought with it relentless fevers and night sweats, slowly draining the life from its victims through profound weight loss. This was an ailment that insidiously wore down the body and spirit, a silent thief of health and vitality. In the days of Johnny Ringo, tuberculosis was a grim sentence, a shadow that loomed with inevitable consequences. Medical science, then in its nascent stages, offered no refuge, no cure. Instead, families watched helplessly as their loved ones succumbed to this slow, inexorable descent into the clutches of mortality. For the Ringo family and many others, they hoped that fresh air and rest could help manage the symptoms. This led to the establishment of sanatoriums, especially in areas with clean, dry air. Many people, like Ringo's father, wanted to move to places like the American West or mountainous regions in search of more favorable climates for their health. In the context of Johnny Ringo's life, the illness of his father and the subsequent move in search of a healthier climate would have been a significant and challenging event, shaping his early experiences and family dynamics. However, the Ringo family's hopes were dashed. The journey to California proved a crucible of trials and tribulation. During their journey, young Johnny endured a grievous foot injury, and the family faced the perils of the frontier, 
including a harrowing encounter with hostile Native Americans that resulted in a brutal slaying of a fellow traveler. All of this witnessed by the young eyes of Johnny Ringo. Yet, the most shattering blow came when Martin Ringo, the family patriarch, met a tragic fate. While scouting for potential threats, a fatal misfire of his shotgun claimed his life as he jumped off the wagon to scout for Indians they feared were in the area. An eyewitness recounted, at the report of the gun, his hat was seen soaring 20 feet skyward, his brain scattered in all directions. The sight was harrowing beyond words, the family's anguish and despair a spectacle of profound sorrow. The death of Martin Ringo left an indelible mark on young Johnny, casting a shadow that would follow him into the annals of Wild West lore. Later on, the winds of fate swept young Ringo to Texas, a land rife with conflict and lawlessness. It was here, amid the turmoil of the Mason County War, that Johnny first tasted the bitter tang of bloodshed, aligning with the notorious Scott Cooley in marking the beginning of his descent into infamy. But it was in the dusty streets of Tombstone, Arizona, where Johnny Ringo's legend would fully take root. This frontier boomtown, alive with miners, cowboys, and gamblers, became the stage for a drama that would etch Ringo's name into the annals of Wild West history. In the saloons and alleys of Tombstone, tensions simmered like a pot on the brink of boiling. Ringo, known for his quick temper and quicker draw, found himself in the thick of it, crossing paths with the likes of Doc Holliday and the Earp Brothers. In the late 1860s, as the echoes of the Civil War still lingered, Johnny Ringo, a name soon to be etched in the annals of the Wild West, ventured away from his family in San Jose, California. Drawn to the lawless expanse of Mason County, Texas, he found camaraderie in Scott Cooley, a former Texas Ranger and the adopted son of rancher Tim Williamson. The tranquility of Mason County was shattered and a German mob lynched two American wrestlers, Elijah and Pete Backus, igniting the flames of the Mason County War. The conflict reached its zenith on May 13, 1875, with the murder of Tim Williamson by Peter, bad man, Bader, a German farmer. Enraged, Cooley, Ringo, and their cohorts launched a vengeful crusade against their German adversaries, branding this period as the Hoodoo War. Cooley, revered and feared as a formidable Texas Ranger, spearheaded this bloody campaign. In the murky depths of this conflict, Ringo's own hands were stained with blood. On September 25, 1875, he, alongside Bill Williams, brutally murdered James Cheney, a man implicated in the death of their ally, Moses Baird. Their reign of terror continued, mistakenly taking the life of Charlie Bader, believing him to be his brother Pete. Their actions did not go unpunished. Ringo and Cooley found themselves behind bars in Burnett, Texas, only to dramatically escape with the help of their comrades. Their paths diverged as they fled from the clutches of the law. By November 1876, the Mason County War had claimed about a dozen lives, and Scott Cooley was believed to have met his demise. Meanwhile, Ringo's destiny continued to unfold. He served briefly as a constable in Royal Valley, Texas, before setting his sights on Arizona. In 1879, Ringo arrived in Cochise County, Arizona Territory, alongside Joseph Graves Olney, a comrade from his Texas days. His reputation for a fiery temper was solidified in Tombstone, a town synonymous with the Wild West. There, he infamously shot Lewis Hancock in a saloon over a refusal of a whiskey drink, although Hancock survived. After the saloon altercation, Johnny Ringo's notoriety in Tombstone grew exponentially. His fiery disposition became the talk of the town, earning him a reputation as a man quick to anger and slow to forgive. Whispers in the dusty streets and smoky taverns suggested that Ringo had aligned himself with the infamous Cowboys, a notorious outlaw gang that terrorized the region. Rumors abounded of his involvement in a series of unsolved murders and robberies alongside this fearsome group, though concrete evidence eluded the pages of history. While Ringo's name was not counted among those in the legendary shootout at the OK Corral, shadows of suspicion lingered around him. The townsfolk speculated that he played a role in the darker chapters of Tombstone's history. He was whispered to be a hidden hand in the December 1881 ambush of Virgil Earp, an attack that left the elder Earp brother forever marred by injury. Additionally, the tragic murder of Morgan Earp in March 1882, cut down while engaged in a casual game of pool, 
had Ringo's name murmured in the same breath as the potential culprits. The Sands of Tombstone also bore witness to Ringo's confrontations with the legendary figures of the era. His most notable encounter was with Doc Holliday in 1882, a near gunfight that led to both men's arrest. Ringo's name was entangled with the notorious Earp brothers, as suspicions arose about his involvement in the ambushes that maimed Virgil Earp and ended Morgan Earp's life. In a twist of fate, Ringo joined a posse led by Cochise County Sheriff Johnny Bean, tasked with pursuing the Earps, who were on a vendetta ride seeking justice for the attacks on their brothers. The chase, a cat-and-mouse game through the rugged Arizona landscape, never resulted in a direct confrontation between the two factions. Johnny Ringo's tale reached its enigmatic conclusion in July 1882. After a spell of heavy drinking during Tombstone's 4th of July celebrations, Ringo vanished, only to be found dead days later under mysterious circumstances. While transporting wood on July 14, Teamster James Yost stumbled upon a startling scene. Nestled within a unique formation of five large blackjack oaks, which arched out from a single root to form a semicircle, was the lifeless body of Johnny Ringo. He was found seated on a large, flat rock that lay at the heart of this natural alcove. The location, not far from Smith's house, was in the West Turkey Creek Valley, close to the Chiricahua Peak in Arizona Territory. The unforgiving desert sun had taken its toll, as evidenced by Ringo's body, which had taken on a darkened hue due to the intense heat. His body, discovered near West Turkey Creek Valley, bore the signs of a violent end. With a bullet wound in his temple and his revolver in hand, the official verdict was suicide. However, the true nature of his demise remains shrouded in mystery and speculation. The coroner's report detailed that Ringo had makeshift foot coverings made from his undershirt, suggesting he hadn't traveled far without his boots. A bullet hole was found in his right temple, the fatal wound angled upward between his eye and ear. His revolver, with one empty chamber, remained in his hand. Whether Johnny Ringo's demise was a case of suicide or murder, several factors lend complexity to the enigma surrounding his final moments. Firstly, Ringo's life was steeped in violence, his hands stained with the blood of his past deeds. The weight of such a life, exacerbated by his known propensity for heavy drinking, could have had a profound impact on his psyche. Secondly, there were reports of Ringo's previous threats to take his own life, adding a layer of plausibility to the suicide theory. Whispers of other fates for Ringo abound. Some say Wyatt Earp, seeking retribution, was the true architect of his end. Others speculate Doc Holliday, driven by rivalry and revenge, was responsible. Then there are tales of Michael O'Rourke, an itinerant gambler, returning to settle old scores. Even buckskin Frank Leslie, while imprisoned, claimed responsibility for Ringo's death, although few gave credence to his words. However, complicating the narrative two notable figures with potential motives for his demise kept coming up in our research. Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. Both men had reasons to desire Ringo's end and were reportedly by some to have been in the vicinity, hunting for members of the cowboys implicated in the attacks on Virgil Earp and the murder of Morgan Earp. But there is conflicting information indicating Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday were in another state at the time of Ringo's death. If this is true, if being the key word, that would certainly rule out them pulling the trigger. Now there are some who will claim someone could have taken Ringo out on behalf of the Earps. We found no evidence though that supported that theory. One name however kept coming up in our research, further adding a twist to an already murky tale, again, Buckskin Frank Leslie's name surfaced. While incarcerated in the Yuma Territorial Prison for the murder of his wife, he purportedly confessed to a prison guard that he was the one who killed Ringo. He never wavered from that claim. This assertion, however, is viewed with a degree of skepticism. Critics suggest that buckskin Frank Leslie might have fabricated the confession in an attempt to curry favor or achieve a certain level of notoriety, either within the Earp circle or in a broader context. Yet, one must ponder the rationale behind Leslie's bold claim especially given the potential consequences of admitting to such a crime. The risks involved in confessing to the murder of a figure like Johnny Ringo could have been significant. This raises the question, could Leslie actually have been the perpetrator of Ringo's demise? The truth of the matter remains elusive, shrouded in the mists of history. 
With no definitive proof available, the question of who was truly responsible for Ringo's death remains unanswered, both today and in the 141 years since the event occurred. We at Facts Intrigue are leaning in the direction that the perpetrator could very well have been Buckskin. Johnny Ringo's final resting place lies near the site of his mysterious death, a silent testament to the turbulent and enigmatic life he led in the Wild West. Today, 141 years later at the time of this video, the true nature of Johnny Ringo's death, whether by his own hand or another's, remains one of the Wild West's most enduring mysteries. As we close this chapter on the mysterious tale of Johnny Ringo, we're left to ponder the unanswered questions of the Wild West. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the dusty trails and shadowed past of one of history's most enigmatic outlaws. If you've enjoyed unraveling the mysteries with us on Facts Intrigue, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us bring more intriguing stories from history to light. And now, we turn to you, our viewers. What do you believe was the true fate of Johnny Ringo?